Well, we're good to go. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody, and good afternoon. I'm City Councillor Paula Fletcher. I'm the chair of the Film, Television, and Digital Media Advisory Board, and the clerk has confirmed we have quorum. So I'd like to call meeting six of the Film, Television, and Digital Media Board to order and welcome everybody here this afternoon. As you know, this meeting is being held using the city's WebEx technology and members and staff are connected by video or calling in. Could we ask for your patience, please, with any delays and technical issues? Members of the public can observe this meeting on YouTube. I would also ask members to please email any motions on any of the agenda items to our board secretary. And you know the address, it's ftdmb at toronto.ca. Could I please request that all staff keep their videos turned off, except for you, Mike Williams, we want your video on today. Thank you. And Marguerite and Maggie, thank you. And Bobby, um, keep their videos off, except for the exemptions that I just read out, when we're not speaking or answering questions. This will make it easier for me as the chair or for anyone watching YouTube to observe members as they participate in the debate on each item and during votes. Could you all please as well keep your microphones muted unless you are answering a question or want to speak or have something to say. Thank you. If members want to ask questions of staff or to speak, just make sure your video is on, raise your hand or unmute your mic and indicate your intention to speak and I'll create a speakers list. I've never known this group to be shy, so I know you will break through whatever impediments WebEx has in store for us this afternoon. And when voting, I'll just ask that everyone has their video on and your hands are raised to indicate your vote. And although we're meeting in different locations and meeting remotely today, the board would like to acknowledge that the land we're meeting on is the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We are also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Are there any declarations of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? I have to ask you that. And if you do, please unmute your mic and let us know. I'll give you one second. Hearing none, thank you very much. None were claimed. And next, we need to confirm the minutes from the last two meetings that the board has held, one pre-COVID on February the 3rd, and another during COVID on June the 5th, 2020. Could I get a mover for those minutes, please? Somebody put your hand up. Anybody? Oh, there it is, Nisha Ali. Moving that, all in favor, opposed, and that's carried. Thank you very much. We're going to proceed with the agenda. We have seven items, but there's two items we're not going to proceed with today. We're going to continue on the consultation and fleshing it out. So um, what I understand is that there was FB 6.3, which the study presentation, Toronto Workforce Study, and FB 6.4, which are on the agenda listed, was a study presentation breaking into Toronto's film and TV production sector are not ready for today. Members of the board and others felt that um, wanted to have more time with staff to continue to get the best, best out of these really significant reports that the board had asked for. So that's why we have a film board in order to create great products and our board has always managed to assist in that. So these items will be back on our agenda early in the new year, probably at our first meeting. And I'd just like to have a motion, please, to withdraw them from the agenda. So could somebody please support the motion that item FB 6.3 be withdrawn? Cynthia Lynch, all in favor, voting, all opposed. Thank you. And I'll also ask for a motion that FB 6.4 be withdrawn from the agenda as well. Can I have a motion for that, please? Hand up, Jason Mossick. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. So we have uh, five items left on our agenda. As I said at the beginning, I think we're going to get you out of here. Well, I shouldn't say that because that always leads to a longer meeting. But we'll try to have uh, a very quick, precise meeting with everybody because you're all extremely busy people doing great things. So first of all, um, we're just going to have some remarks from the co-chairs. 
the very first thing that we have to do today is um, to thank a certain... Mike, you put your video back on, please. You just went off video now. Mike Williams, who you may or not, may, or may not know, is um, retiring, even though we're planning to just lock him up in that office up in a, whatever floor you, you live on, the ninth or 10th floor at City Hall. He's going to be leaving the city after a number of years in uh, playing such an incredibly important role for economic development for the whole city in so many different ways, culture file, just the economy, the um, waterfront, uh, film, protecting employment lands. Uh, Mike is one of the heaviest lifters I know. He's one of the most respected people at City Hall. He's somebody that has an ability to move in the public sector and in the private sector. That's a very uh, rare quality to be able to move back and forth between the two. He's approachable. He cares so much, and it's going to be very hard to find anybody who will be able to fill your shoes, Mike. And on behalf of everybody in film, Mike has made it his mission. I think film is everybody, film and television and digital is everybody's mission on this board, but Mike has been with us completely. He has never faltered in making sure that the industry is being listened to at the city, that it gets a tremendous amount of respect, and we understand that it's one of the big three, food, finance, and film, for the city's economy. Uh, and Mike, I just want to personally thank you, as being the chair here, for your tremendous work and support of this industry. All of those studies that we've had on supporting the industry on maintaining film in clusters and maintaining film on the waterfront and leading at TPLC and leading at Build and leading it at CreateTO and so many places that you've led in order to keep this industry strong. I don't think we'd have been able to maintain and do all of the things that this industry has been able to do without Mike's leadership and um, rolling up his sleeves and getting things done. So that's my official and personal thanks to you, Mike. I'm going to throw this over to Jonathan for a few remarks and then open it up to anybody else who wants to tell Mike he's not allowed to leave. But he's told me he's going anyway, no matter how much we beg him. Jonathan. He told me that it wasn't retirement. He was moving on to other greater things, and uh, I hope so. I hope that's the truth, Mike, uh, because if I may, as uh, and thank you, Councillor, for, uh, for your leadership. Um, and for your kind words about Mike, because it's all true. And I guess what I should say is, as somebody who is technically the spokesperson for people from the industry, uh, Mike, we have had a, a very profitable and prosperous period uh, with you at the helm. Uh, and you have treated us fairly. You have done very heavy lifting for very serious programs that have put all of our people to work, help build businesses, and that is no small feat. And uh, you balance the interests of the city, other sectors, and ours expertly, sir. And uh, I thank you very much for, on behalf of everyone on this call and everybody we represent uh, for that hard work. It uh, truly is appreciated. So thank you. And I'm sure there's yes. others that want to echo the same, Mike, because uh, you are well-respected and loved. And went on many trips with us. Yes. Uh, anybody else want to have a word about Mike? Or else I'm going to throw it over to you, Mike, where you can confess your love for film and that you're really not leaving us. Mike, it's Nisha from uh, the visual effects side and animation side in Queso. Uh, I've had the opportunity of knowing you for the past five years and there have been instances when I wondered how you got through the day because there's so much that is thrown at you. And yet you miraculously, you know, made decisions that even when we didn't, uh, there were tough ones, uh, you always managed to find something to give to each of us get through what we needed to. So I really appreciated that. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Nisha. Cynthia, did you have your hand up? No. Um, I think I was just clapping, but uh, now that you 
Now that you gave me the opportunity to unmute, I will just echo everything that Jonathan and Nisha said. Um, Mike, it's been a pleasure to work with you. Um, it has been about five years since I came on board at the Ontario, and um, we will miss you. Thank you for everything, and best of luck in your Thank new you. adventures. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, everybody. I'm going to ask Mike, did you want to say a few words? <clears throat> Yes, if I could, uh, Councillor, um, have uh, four quick thank yous. First of all, two co-chairs, and I'll start with Councillor Fletcher, who is also my ward councillor, so uh, um, and has been an amazing uh, champion for uh, the film, digital, and uh, TV industries. Um, probably one of my highlight experiences on council floor was to watch councillor fletcher within i would say 25 minutes from start to finish that uh, convinced council to invest um i don't know how much it turned out to be but a mo greater than 15 million dollars to support uh the studios in, in the waterfront area when we started losing them due to the uh changes down there and we ended up uh, swapping a piece of land with uh, Canada Post, and uh, so when they, from the very first moment that the idea hit council floor that this property was going to be sold to somebody at that time unknown, um, to the point in time when council decided to do it, I think was twenty or twenty-five minutes, um, and when it council sometimes uh, half a morning to uh, decide on how to spend fifty thousand dollars. Uh, you can know how uh, impressive that feat was. Uh, there is nobody on council that is uh, anywhere close to uh, uh, Councillor Fletcher in terms of support for this industry. The mayor is a pretty close second, but uh, um, I think it's been uh, incredible. I have learned to, to my uh, to be always on guard because uh, uh, Councillor Fletcher is almost always right, maybe always right all the time. Uh, and uh, but the energy she puts into it, the passion, the commitment is just absolutely phenomenal. And I think this committee in this industry is uh, very fortunate to have. Uh, I'll keep on wanting to say Paula, but in public, I have to say Councillor. Yeah. Um, and then to the other co chair, Jonathan, uh, thank you very much for your kind comments, and thank you, by the way, Paula, for your kind comments. I think, uh uh, you overstate my impact. I think the smartest thing I did was the timing to just uh, catch a wave, and uh, the industry has been a very strong success story for the for the city. Um, Jonathan, your quiet leadership and calm approach, and uh, also equally passionate commitment to the industry has been phenomenal. Uh, I've learned about the importance of workforce development, and I think you'll see and terms of some of the updates that we continue to focus on that for this industry and so uh, I thank you very much for, for that uh, leadership. Also would like to thank the members of this committee. These committees are vital for, for uh, helping the city make the right decisions. Uh, the fact that this is a formal committee of council uh, means that the visibility for this industry is very strong your individual contrib contributions to the committee have been terrific and keeping it at the forefront. Um, my title includes economic development and culture, and the film industry is probably, the film, television, digital media industry, are probably the best examples of how those two go together and uh, to the benefit of Frontonians and the world in terms of from the creativity and from the employment and investment perspective. And then my uh, final comment is really to thank my colleagues. I'm just, um, I, I like saying when I'm when I go around the table of introducing that I work for the people that work in the division and I see myself as my number one job is to help support this the staff. But I think this industry has been incredibly well served with Marguerite as the film commissioner and director of the of the section. Uh, the work that Magali has put in as a sector support person has been incredible, and I know that you all love and very much appreciate it. 
and then sort of the new person in a way, but now very, very battle tested. Bobby uh, Donches and, and his staff of uh, permanent officers who have in the last three or four months done an unbelievable job in the pent up demand and the, the boom that we currently have in filming and production in, in Toronto. So thank you to Marguerite Magali and Bobby and, and all your uh, colleagues, Bobby, in the film office, please pass on my thank you. So I appreciate the opportunity, Paula, to say a few words. I'd like to thank everybody for the trip. And uh, I'm not going anywhere. And Paula, I still will, still will be voting for you if, uh, if you run again. So um, ha happy to support the industry any way I can. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much for the kind comments. Have a good meeting. Thank you, Mike. Don't go just yet. Uh, yeah. We're all clapping. I wish we were together in person. It would be so much better, but we're not. But yeah, but I'd be in tears then, Paula, so that would be... A <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, we do know where you are, and I know, you'll, I know you're a big advocate for this industry, and we'll still be able to assist and give, uh, give advice whenever called upon. And I'm looking forward Thank to you. doing that. I do have a motion here. It isn't that you can't retire. It is a motion congratulating you officially from the board. Carol is going to put that up. There it is that the Film, Television and Digital Media Board congratulate Mike Williams, the General Manager of Economic Development and Culture, on his retirement from the City of Toronto and extend appreciation for his leadership and many years of service to the city and the film and television industry. So that is a formal motion of this board. I'm going to move that. I think Jonathan will second that. And then I would think it would be good to have a recorded vote here. So, <laughs> Mike, it's officially Thank you. It's in the minutes from the members. And I'm going to uh, do a re oh, it's clerk will do a recorded vote. It's very, we don't do these very often here. So, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, a, yay or nay when you hear your name called? Uh, I'm yay. Jonathan Ahi? Uh, definitely a yay. Yay. Nisha Ali. Yay. Peter Apostopoulos. You're there with your microphone off. You've got to turn it on. Yeah, sorry about that. You're good. Jeff. All right. Grant. Yay. Victoria Harding. Yay. <laughs> For technical people, you're not doing very well here today, folks. <laughs> <laughs> David Hardy, you have nay. to say yay or nay. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Alistair Hepburn. Yay. Cynthia Lynch. Yay. Jim Mercopolis. A, a very enthusiastic yay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Monty Montgomery. Yay. Jason Mossick. Yay. Alma Parvizian. Yay. Pringle. Yay. Kenneth Rogers. Yay. Jennifer Stewart. Yay. Krista Tazio Morrison. Yay. And Samantha Trout. Yay. Yay, Mike Williams, passed Thank unanimously. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And thank you, members of the board, for the kind tribute. To Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. You're welcome to stay with us for the rest of the meeting if you want. Or Thank you. No, I'm uh, I'm five hours ahead of you right now, so I will. Uh, in England. I I don't. Sorry, I didn't know he was in England joining us today, and I didn't realize yeah. that, Mike. So. Thank you so much for taking the time okay. to do that with us today. We really appreciate it. Well, no, thank you. I was uh, very pleased to do it, obviously. Good. All right. Bye Thanks now. So much. Okay, uh, just an update for you on the board itself that coming up next week, it, council will be, it's our midterm, so members will be added or taken off, whatever, to the board. I have put my name in again. Um, and councillors uh, McKelvey and Robinson, and Councillor Robinson is back, uh, 
to City Hall, but in not working all the committees. So neither of them will be putting their names forward, but Councillor Carroll and Councillor Bradford have put their names forward for this board. So I'm expecting that they'll be members of this board going forward. I've also asked to continue as the chair should they put me back on the board. There will be as well a change because, or we have to have an election for the co-chair. So once we get new council members on, then at our first meeting in uh, the new year, which is probably going to be February or so, we will also have uh, an election for the co-chair. So that's just an update on the board that's taking place. Does anybody have any questions? No? Okay, thank you. And then we're just going to do an industry temperature check with the board members. And I'm just going to open that up for Jonathan. I don't see you on camera any longer, Jonathan. If you can. I assure you, I assure you I'm here. How we're dealing you. with COVID. And I just want to thank Cynthia. I guess she had a command performance with uh, Toronto Public Health and with Magli and Marguerite to go over all the protocols that are being used in the industry in order to let the provincial government know if we're passing muster or not. And she got five stars. So congratulations on that, Cynthia, and the job you did because everybody's able to say what a great job the industry is doing handling COVID. Very difficult circumstances, but doing a great job. Jonathan, do you want to uh, take that away? Uh, well, I thank Councillor, thank you very much. I think that was a good segue. Uh, and Cynthia, thank you for your heavy lifting on this uh, file, uh, you know, with the city provincially everywhere and, and to a lot of members. I know quite a few stakeholders around this table are on other committees provincially and everywhere to ensure that film could weather the uh, challenges of COVID. And so I don't, uh, not to unpack it all here because we all know what we're doing, but I would say that I think uh, I would like to A, thank everyone around this committee, uh, all the stakeholders, everyone from the unions, the guilds, producers. If you look at our history, now that we have some time under our belt uh, with COVID, a very serious pandemic that is obviously affecting not only our city, our country, or, you know, multiple countries around the world, multiple industries. Uh, we, as a city, I think have, and as an industry, have responded very well. Uh, there's always more we can be doing. I will submit that. There's always going to be areas potentially where individual productions might be challenged. But if you look at, uh, at what we've been doing or what you've been doing as a whole, uh, we have had an, an amazing response to the COVID uh, crisis uh, from this sector, from this industry, taking it very seriously, bringing in uh, all of us, putting in effort and time to bring in the best information, incorporate that best information. You know, Jason and the team that was at Section 21 and, and did the heavy lifting on our guidelines taking the best practices from around the world and then adapting them to specifically what the needs of our city and our province are. I thought that was great work. So I, I just wanted to make sure that we acknowledge that we're, as an industry, have done awesome work uh, with support from the city and Marguerite, your work at Tor and Restart. Like the focus hasn't just been on getting shooting now and staying shooting. It has been on how do we help this industry recover? What do we need to look at? We're going to get into that on the agenda, but just to touch on COVID, I'm not sure if there's anybody like Cynthia, if you wanted to sort of unpack what you did the other day. So it, for committee members who weren't aware, but I wanted to commend everybody for the, the hard work that our industry is doing. And it's clear that it's being seen by all levels of government, our response, especially now when we're, we see other industries and other sectors facing a shutdown. So uh, just my kudos uh, to you for that heavy lifting, those of you who know who you are. And, and any comments here that sort of people wanted to, to get, I think information, this, the purpose of this committee is to get the information in front of the city and to our councillors and to our great team at the film office. So I sort of would submit that would be the, the topic for discussion today rather than really unpack our COVID response because we're well versed on it. So, but Cynthia, I would throw it to you if you just want to give us a bit of an update on that because I think that's rather essential. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, although I think you stole all my lines. <laughs> I'll be quick. Um, but yeah, we did have a meeting with Toronto Public Health I think it was just last week, although it's COVID time, so it seems like a lot longer ago, um, and had great feedback from them. Uh, we brought a producer and a, an on-site COVID coordinator with us to explain all the protocols and answer any questions they may have. They didn't have very many questions, which I think is just a testament to the great work that the film office and Megley and Bobby have been doing to keep Toronto Public Health in the loop. Um, so that's great news and they were pretty complimentary. So we will, you know, continue to keep the communications going. Um, I know this is the city of Toronto film board, but we are also having those conversations at the provincial level as well. Um, and continue as things change to keep everybody updated and answer questions and hopefully get answers for people. And then 
I know Jonathan already said this, but I can't echo it strongly enough. Just congratulations to all the unions and the producers and everyone who has worked together, implemented excellent protocols, and uh, really just made working in a very difficult time safe for everybody. And I really can't appreciate, I can't express my appreciation for that work enough. It's just, it's amazing. And I'm very proud to go into those meetings and talk about it. So thank you to everyone. Thank you, Cynthia. I appreciate it. Uh, anyone else who wants to sort of raise COVID, a COVID comment or a question? Just seeing none. Uh, I think then the next uh, sort of push would be because we are sort of taking tackling COVID and, and facing that issue uh, with the most sincerity that it, it deserves. Uh, I'm, I want to echo my comments to a lot of people around this table who have over this period not lost sight of all of the initiatives that formed our strategic plan. So it would have been very easy for us to get bogged down in just a COVID response and only a COVID response and getting back to work. But I have to commend a number of stakeholders and uh, Marguerite and Magley and their team, Bobby, everyone in that film office who have been making sure that the real true work that keeps the industry growing and alive, not just the COVID response, uh, is still getting done. And so uh, from that standpoint, I think uh, one of the questions, you know, we were getting into about workforce development, but I just uh, just to sort of have it on record. I know we're busy again. We're back at it. We have some of those same issues, but I, I to, com to commend the team. Uh, and you guys for your commitment to some of the workforce development initiatives that that work that's gone on through COVID as well. I think that's been amazing and we're going to hear about some of that later as well. But really, I think uh, on, a, on a quick level, it would be good to have a bit of a discussion about some of the barriers we're going to see facing us in 2021. Like We're going to have a discussion about workforce and I'm sure workforce development is definitely one of the barriers we're facing. We see that uh, BIPOC issues, uh, women's issues, those, those are facing the industry, the things that this committee had taken on. We know those are there. So I'm just thinking if there's any other barriers to working at full capacity in 2021, uh, I think this committee should put their mind towards that. Not, not whether I'm soliciting them right now directly or just making sure that we have that discussion uh, in our upcoming meetings. So I'll throw it to anybody there if there's any comments uh, that they have directly for this uh, beginning of this meeting uh, with regards to some of the things the board should be looking at for 2021 or, or some of the barriers that might not be on our radar. Uh, for the challenges we're going to be facing uh, getting back to full capacity in, in, in 2021. Jonathan, um, Nisha here. I just uh, wasn't sure if this was the right time to say that, but we uh, at KSO, um, due to the work from home uh, that uh, we've all had to um, you know, mitigate and uh, broadband issues, is this the right time to discuss this or should I do that at, later, at a later Don't. date? Well, I think that's sort of the idea is rather than really getting into the nitty gritty of the issues and unpacking them, I think what we're looking okay. for is more high level. What are the issues you're facing? And I think that's a great example sure. of broadband. Like I know Marguerite and Magalie have been talking about it, uh, but that's a great yeah. example to sort of raise to the larger committee that might be specific to one area within film, television, digital media, but is very important. So I think that's a great example. So. Okay. And, and if you have a little more specificity on it, that's great, but like not debate the issues, but let, like what are they? We'll face sure. Them right sure. Sure. Yeah, I, it really has to do with the uh, bandwidth requirements and now that everyone is working from home and not only within the greater Toronto, but uh, across Ontario, the, uh, the cities outside of uh, Toronto, uh, because currently we have, you know, we have our workforce that's looking to work from all across Ontario and in remote locations where we currently don't have stable uh, bandwidth. As we were talking about also uh, for the post-production side, the intra-company workflows, how the company individuals and companies can work together um, to traffic heavy data. We are talking about the use of cloud services, um, what you know, what the cost factor would be if we have to rely on that going forward. And also what kind of hiring or recruitment practices might be. And so it's all tied up within, you know, how we do that if we're working, continuing to work remotely. That, that is a perfect example of the kind of stuff we're looking to solicit uh, at the beginning of this meeting and then sort of here. So thank you, Nisha. Okay, great. Are there any others for any sort of uh, potential barriers that they've seen that we should be ensuring we're focusing on as we get into sort of the, the, the new board meetings that are now going to be held more regularly? 
Okay. Then, uh, this isn't the only time. I'm oh, sorry, Jim. I can't see everyone. So sorry, I saw no, Jim's no. hand. Just speaking on behalf of some speaking on behalf of some of some clients who are having difficulty getting locations, that might be something we want to throw our weight towards in the new year. Uh, production is resuming in studios. It's resuming on location. But a number of locations that, uh, according to the City of Toronto rules, are shut down, are very reluctant to open their doors for fear of longer term shutdown or penalty. So we need to walk a fine line between educating those um, those facilities that uh, film and TV production technicians are tested three times a week in some cases, and as a result, we're a safe um, uh, industry to uh, to be able to use facilities. But at the same time, be careful that we don't. Um, make other uh, buildings or businesses that don't receive locations calls uh, envious or uh, incite some kind of a problem. So I think that's something we're going to have to deal with in, in the new year. I'm hearing about multiple to large television productions having challenges uh, securing the locations that they really, really want. And it's having to do with COVID shutdowns. So we may want to decide how to tackle that in the uh, in the new year. Another great example of something that uh, we have a vested interest in ensuring everyone else in the city re recovers well from COVID as well, because we use their facilities, we use them, we use their businesses. Uh, so selfishly, yes, but also I think that's a great point is it's important for us to be able to succeed. We need to access these locations. We need to do it in a safe manner. We're not putting them at risk. So uh, another great problem that we're going to have to tackle in the, in the new term of the board with the new councillors. I think I saw other people with hands up. Uh, so if I just shout out, I can't see everyone. I apologize. No need to be official here. I, as clerks know, I tend to. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, I don't see any others. So, uh, Marguerite, Marguerite, or Marguerite, do you, uh, Marguerite, do you have anything to comment on any of those? Uh, those are very two point. I know you're working on both of those issues that were raised. So, not to put you on the spot. Oh no, that's okay. Um, uh, <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I'm just going to try to start my video here. Um, so uh, certainly uh, later on in the agenda, uh, Krista Tazio Morton is going to bring us up to speed on some of the uh, digital infrastructure issues that were just so we do have uh, with regards to the issues that actually working through that in the film office. Uh, needed so that is i don't know if it was just me but i didn't hear any of that i'm not sure if anybody i apologize but yeah i know we're not hearing you marguerite and you don't have your video on yeah. either so something with your uh, audio while we're waiting for that say that we're going to be hearing about yes per digital issues later on and i'm unclear as to if we know the number of locations and it might be helpful to bring that forward if they're still closed uh, in at the next meeting which locations are shut off for for shooting okay do some advocacy there jim if you know some or sorry don't know magalie or marguerite if, bobby you may have a list of those you might want to address that can I ask, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. Okay, good. I've unmuted every piece of equipment that I have. Um, so uh, I did want to uh, respond to the point raised by Nisha simply by letting you know that uh, Krista Tavio Morrison will be uh, addressing uh, some of the actions that have taken place on that item uh, later on in the agenda. So you'll be getting an update, a detailed update from her. <laughs> With regards to it's happening again, Marguerite, um, at City Hall, uh, using the resources that we have, so it is it is very much in process. We're, we're aware of this and we're working on it. Perfect, uh, Margaret. You broke up there, but we got most of it. That it's still the work's ongoing. We appreciate it. So we'll have to wrestle with those IT issues. I'm not one to throw rocks. I'm the worst. So don't worry. Uh, the next one, I think, uh, which is pressing and full disclosure as somebody who is now operating a studio, I think studio expansion and the studio crunch that we were facing prior to COVID is still on people's minds. So uh, rather than lead the charge, uh, we are still doing our development here in, in Scarborough. Uh, but anybody else from the studio side out there that has any barriers or challenges uh, from going forward? Are we seeing any uh, concerns that you might have being an integral part of the industry? 
Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, when we uh, obviously there's been some challenges along the way, but uh, honestly, the uh, um, you know the film office and Marguerite Magley, we've been keeping them up to speed on if we we are running into some challenges, just COVID related, whether that's you know permits or or, or whatever in our expansion. Um, we 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 are. Um, I'm able to pick up the phone and make a call and and uh, or send a note and 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 or through any of our city contacts. Um, it's it's been uh, it's been okay. We're we're busy uh, right now and uh, we're doing a lot of earthworks, uh, which which is in large part isolated type work. So we're we're able to progress. Um, but yeah, I mean we're slightly delayed and and uh, but we'll we're, we're we haven't wavered in our commitment to expand and uh, we're continuing to do so. And with the assistance of, of those working in the various uh, film offices and, and at, at City Hall uh, along the way. So, so we, we seem to be faring okay in, the, in, in, a, in a COVID world and uh, we'll continue uh, our, our, uh, our process in uh, making sure that we get these stages built. You guys, Jennifer. I had a question. I'm just wondering um, if anybody could comment on how this is affecting workforce development. Um, I know at the Academy we've had a, a, a director's program going for quite some time and we have obviously not been able to get, um, you know, our apprentices onto sets. And I'm just wondering if that's something that's affecting others and if there's any uh, solution in sight for the foreseeable future. That, that is a great question. So actually the next update uh, is a good segue too. So unless somebody from the studio, I would, what I would say is uh, I'm going to answer that question next, unless anybody had any comments from some of the studio challenges. I know uh, from all the studio owners I've talked to, you've done great work in accommodating productions and their new unique space needs, whether it be long-term or at least for the short term. So commitment to that. My apologies for getting a feedback that was Peter. loop. That was Peter. Uh, whoever's, can you just be on mute? I'm hearing, thank you. I'm on mute, am I fine? I don't know All right, so essentially, um, I mean, for us here at Tribro, we, uh, uh, we're in the same position as, as Pinewood. We're, we're moving earth, uh, doing some. Sorry. <clears throat> Yeah, so we're moving along in Pickering with our earthworks, uh, preload of the soil. Uh, we've taken on a, uh, a basically 300,000 square feet of space at Pearson. We've got the uh, infield terminal that we control, and we've got a production moving in in January. We've got a WestJet hangar that we've taken over as well, and uh, we've got a show in there now. They've been in there for a couple of months, so we're we're full, um, and we're we're you know we're great. We love working with the productions because they were really managing the COVID in and out policies and and uh you know it's it's actually almost better this way because we're, we're keeping out people that typically you know may just show up to set now or now no one's coming it's just it's fantastic so we're we're, we're moving along uh, on our end as well so we're all you know again i think all the studio guys and and most of the producers on, on this side are very happy uh we're just you know crossing fingers we can all manage to keep ourselves uh from coughing on each other you know absolutely thank you peter uh, any other any other comments about that before I get into Jennifer's very important question? Jim, nothing. You're good. All right. I know you're at the heart of it already. Anyway, so uh, so that Jennifer, your question is excellent. And actually, I think uh, Councillor, if that's the segue that we need to get into six point two, I don't want to bust any rules. I don't think we need a motion so for why don't of these opening. Receive the reports from mm -hmm. uh, FB six point one. Motion to receive. Yes. I'll move that. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. We'll move to FB 6.2, and that's dealing directly Perfect. with workforce development. Thank you. So, so back to Jennifer. Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, and so, for example, I'll talk about sort of the XOTO schools program that uh, you know we had started, which really was trying to get students out. A lot of the unions were setting up apprenticeship programs, and of course, as was going to happen when the industry was shut down, those programs shut down. Uh, when the industry started back up, it's not so easy as just to start them back up because schools weren't starting. There was a lot of uh, apprehension and concern about students and even with the productions and their COVID protocols. So I know, and I'll leave most of the reporting really to Magley, uh, who did, uh, and Marguerite, but Magley did a ton of uh, lifting on the XOTO schools program, as well as a number of other workforce development issues. So to your point about some of the programs, I think most of them 
got paused. Uh, but then when film started coming back, like the extra two schools program, uh, Jill Thornhill, who runs that program, uh, she turned that into as, as much online as possible for the students and incorporating actually a, a very broad swath of, of talented technicians who were sitting at home with nothing to do and on Zoom. So she tried to get them to come in and talk to students, things like that. But we unfortunately didn't have a lot of pickup from students at the time. Everyone was trying to navigate COVID and what that meant for them and their most near term sort of uh, life and, and how that would proceed. But I think Magli, and then I'll throw it to her really not to put you on the spot, has done excellent work during that time period of uncertainty to build a lot of programs that I think we can pick up on once we stabilize a little and people are able to get people back out on set. So Mags, Magli, I mean, sorry, we're good friends. Uh, Mag, there, Magli, there you are. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. And yes, Jennifer, to your point, like perfect segue. So I'll do a quick recap. Uh, of what happened in 2020 uh, in the programs and initiatives that we have been involved with and a bit about others and where we're heading for 2021. So as you said, a lot of the training programs, whether we were involved or not, uh, a lot of it is about onset placements or in-person teaching and delivery, whether it's XOTO schools or the uh, production assistant training program we do with POV Center for Young Black uh, Professionals and the DGC Ontario. All of that training that could not be done in person as much as possible uh, was switched to online training and in some cases like very limited amount of people in a space to do it. Um, so the reticence at the summer when or really the spring in around the idea of like, should we really be trying to quickly pump up more people in the industry kind of became an odd type of statement. So we all decided let's refine what we have now, turn to digital, what we can help those uh, that we may not be involved with turn into digital teachings as much as possible, get them online workshops uh, and professors or teachers to do it, uh, and do more online career talks or the life of a film, uh, study of departments in sessions. So we did that for those programs uh, and tried to refine that type of offering, something that I would say not necessarily was beneficial, but it allowed to reach more in the case of the schools particularly, uh, it allows to reach hundreds of students instead of, you know, 15 or 20 at a time in person. So that's something that's really to be built upon. Uh, the idea of the career talks and all the, like with this board, we've talked about this a lot on this topic is there's training in person at, at an age where people are ready to be uh, to be working a few, a few years later. But there's certainly the younger generation that we want to sort of incul with the idea of the industry as being very, very viable careers and very diverse type of avenues to be taken from within. So XOTO schools this year uh, turned to online with a pretty scaled up uh, online offering for the audience reach. Uh, what's coming up next year, we just signed the agreement with our uh, wonderful partners at NABIT to host the program manager, uh, Jill, for this for next year. Uh, it's and Jennifer, I'm not sure any, anybody can really answer whether uh, these types of placements, whether for uh, TDSB students or for adults uh, in any other programs, including yours, will be able to go on set right away. There's, I think we all hope that by the summer there might be some of those opportunities again, but we'll have to kind of all go with, with the flow on that. Um, and the idea of scaling up the training program, like the production assisting training program, uh, was pushed to next year. We would have liked to have two cohorts instead of one, but we actually managed to do the one this fall. Uh, nonetheless, next year would uh, scale up to two, and next year the goal would be to add a stream. So if this one leads uh, participants into DGC-type uh, careers, or at least um, familiarizes them with that type of work and fast-tracks them uh, in the apprenticeship pool of the DGC, the goal was for this year, which is now pushed to next year, to do that for trades technicians position with ISC, with NABET. So uh, what was going to be launched this year is very likely to be launched probably in the spring of next year uh, to add. So the idea there is really for us to, on top of the sort of base um, education of high school uh, kids, is uh, at the 18 plus level to kind of bake in these community group groups training program. Uh, that are concentrated on Black, Indigenous, and people of color uh, to be baked in with one or two cohorts a year, ultimately for probably each union, move into VFX as well. There's great uh, interest on part of the 
community groups that work with us on this to try to tie the links with from the communities that they engage with and the VFX and animation sector. So that's where we would be moving uh, towards for next year. One additional um, sort of piece that we'll add to that is an online toolkit that will also have a sort of, not just on the city website, but something that can be sort of shared around uh, around all the jobs in the industry, like breaking it down from departments. A lot of you on this board have been very helpful in um, helping us sort of write this content and verify the content for that. Uh, so it would have pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, VFX animation, all the current training programs that exist at the community level, workshops from film festivals, union training, colleges, universities, name it, all the entry points. We really want to use 2021 to help everybody de demystify the industry and make it clear what the avenues are at any level of expertise or background uh, or economic situation really. So these are, uh, these are the sort of focus points we're going to have for next year. Uh, I'll turn to Marguerite uh, to tell you guys about the work we're doing with all the community groups. I've, I've not listed them here today, but uh, you might have noticed there's a lot of great community groups doing work uh, with BIPOC communities that um, are probably in some ways contacting some of you. You might partner with some of them. And uh, we're trying to sort of set the tone for a system that makes um, a lot of sense to a lot of people. So Marguerite, if you want to explain what we've been up to. Sure, thanks. So can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, figured it out. Um, okay. So one of the things that we noticed, um, partly uh, as a result of, of COVID, um, but I think it was even happening before then, obviously, is we noticed that there are a lot more community groups um, that are really focused on workforce development for BIPOC youth. And so it was striking us that because there were so many operators in this space, whether it's, you know, Remix or Center for Young Black Professionals or POV Third Street or Oya Media or Black Women in Film and so on, the New Black Academy, the Black Screen Office and so on. Um, we were uh, thinking that there was a role for the city to play, a convening role for us to play in bringing these groups together and really finding out what is each group doing? What's their value proposition? What's their offering? And how are all these groups working together uh, in a really optimal way as a sector. And what we found by reaching out and doing one-on-one -on -one interviews with each one of these groups is that they weren't actually talking a lot to each other. And we were seeing opportunities for partnerships that they may not have been aware of themselves because they were working in a way that was a bit more siloed, probably just because a lot of them were starting up. So we're um, taking what we learned from the one-on-one -on -one interviews, sharing it with them, and then convening a meeting next week. Uh, we've hired a facilitator who's from the community who will lead that conversation so that, you know, and they're, they're um, really on side with this, really uh, keen and looking forward to having an opportunity to really figure out how they can work effectively, more effectively as a community of communities uh, to make sure that they're filling any gaps that they spot and that they're conscious of overlap where it exists. Uh, and overlap in and of itself is not a problem because the demand is so high that if more than one stakeholder is delivering on that, that's not an issue. We just want to make sure everybody's conscious of it. So um, that's what we're working on right now. And I will just add one more thing that we're up to and that we've really observed, like that really speaks to this point and something we really hope to answer. As you know, we often talk about customer service coming out of a film office or a film commission. And we want to make sure that we're like sort of in step with what that might mean, like what all this mapping of systems might mean uh, for that context. And something we've really observed in the past four months is productions coming to Toronto or already in Toronto, domestic and service productions, both reach out uh, increasingly to ask how can we tap into the talent from the programs that exist in your jurisdiction. So. If there's eight community groups that all have participants, we don't expect, you know, for example, Disney to call them all to figure out how to uh, get participants, hire two people uh, on sets, have them in the office. So we're trying to figure out the best sort of funnel to be able to serve as these kinds of requests. Um, and that's part of the work that, that, that leads into film office work, I would say. Excellent. Thank you very much, Magli. Any uh, questions for Magli or Marguerite on workforce? Um, That's so fantastic to hear, guys. I could, yeah, just bringing everyone together and now reinventing the wheel. Energy that can be created. That's freaking awesome. So thank you for that. Made my day. 
Agreed. Any other comments? Questions? So I'm trying to see everyone's hands. I got to flip between the two screens. So feel free to shout. Jason, you had your hand up. Uh, can't hear you, mate. Sorry, Jason. I, it was really uh, cutting in and out. I don't know if it's your headset or if it's WebEx. I apologize. Turn your video off, Jason. It might be helpful to be able to hear you better. Go for it. Well, Jason, well, Jason's troubleshooting that. What he's saying is he misses working with me and he loves me. And <laughs> Jason, Eddie. Well, so do I, Jonathan. Nice try, David. We know the truth. Uh, anyone else? Yes. All right. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, just, just to address kind of Jennifer's question in terms of onset opportunities coming out of COVID. Uh, reluctant and thinking that there wasn't going to be a lot of opportunity for technicians looking to have that experience and, and apprentices and whatnot on a lot of our signatory shows, much to my surprise, uh, we've been able to have 29 apprentices in five months on uh, our show. If I kind of the parameters under which our apprentices go out, so we usually try and put as many as possible out swap them out after a few weeks and whatnot. Obviously with COVID, understanding the need or the desire to limit the comings and goings of new crew members, obviously with testing and whatnot, we've been able to accommodate that. Um, so I, I really, you know, our members have been keen on taking them on and, and taking them under their wing and bringing them out as have the producers. So uh, it's actually still been a huge focus for us and actually a huge success. Again, kind of much to my surprise, I have to admit. That's excellent. That's excellent. Excellent yeah. news. Yeah. I will say we have we have not had the same experience trying to get placements for our women directors. So um, it's it's been a bit difficult, and we have you know pivoted also to online um, learning and mentorship, and you know placing some of them in programs and what have you. But it's still you know their preference, and that's how the program was designed to have them on set. So we're working through that. <laughs> it's been very tough. I imagine so. Uh, Victoria, I saw your hand up, Victoria Harding. Yeah, sorry, Jennifer, just to speak to that slightly, if I may. I think uh, I think it's likely that the that the challenges will continue. Um, you know, we did have a situation where there was a show impacted by exactly that scenario, and I think that. Uh, you know, we have to consider the safety of our directors and the producers have to continue to continue to consider the safety of the entire prep pod. And, and that is a very strategically placed observer position that um, has, a, we already have a situation where there's been a case brought in. So not from one, sorry, not to imply that your program was involved. I know it wasn't, but it's just, we have to, I think you'll find that that carries on through until COVID is resolved. Victoria, excellent comments, absolutely. Uh, before I make any comments, anybody else for a comment or a question? Sorry, I'm trying to, Monty, please. I mean, business agent. Thank you, Jonathan. I uh, hope you can hear me. Yeah, you know, these programs are really important. Um, it is unfortunate that COVID sidetracked um, the programs that we were very, very close to launching. Uh, cooperation with the city, um, the CEE program. We were literally, I think we're a week away from starting all the, uh, the multiple days of training uh, involved prior to setting the placements out the set. And uh, we look forward to um, continuing with those pro programs as soon as we can safely get people on the sets. Because right now, unfortunately, we're still in a position where uh, it's it's really deemed essential people only. 
on set, um, which makes it difficult to uh, facilitate these programs in the on set element. But uh, certainly committed to um, restarting that as soon as we can and uh, committing to the XOTO schools program as well as soon as it's safe uh, to send kids um, from high school back onto our film sets without compromising their health or, and safety. So um, these are great things. I mean, I, I know, you know, most of the unions and guilds, if not all, you know, we all have committees set up to, to, to grow our memberships, to become more diverse. Um, so, you know, now's the time to, to make some impact in those regards. Hopefully, we expect a very busy year in 2021 um, where we can start uh, kicking those into high gear. Absolutely. Great comments, Monty. Any other uh, questions or comments? Seeing David, please. David Hart. You know, I think it's, I think it's likely that we're not going to see a, a much of a change for at least the first probably two quarters, probably half the year. Um, you know, we're not going to have a, a, a vaccination uh, omnipresent for a while. And I would I would expect that production will maintain that limited number of people on set only the required for the foreseeable future. So we should be hopefully thinking about a, some kind of a slight pivot. Uh, absolutely. You know, I if I, I sorry, is there anyone else who wants to speak before I make a comment? I don't think so. Uh, and feel free to jump in. Uh, I have to say, it's like these apprenticeship programs, these workforce development programs, we know how important they are to the success of our industry. Uh, these programs for BIPOC and and to place women in not you know in roles that otherwise they wouldn't be able to find historically opportunities in. We know this is important to the success of our business. Uh, we're facing a hit with COVID, but why I'm so encouraged for the future is all through COVID. I think with quite a few, if not all of you, with Marguerite, with Magley, with a number of producers, with uh, stakeholders, uh, the questions were, what's going to happen to our workforce development and what's going to happen to our BIPOC programs and where, where do we go? And that isn't because you're worried about them for business. I think we know that we could continue on uh, and, and survive COVID and do business, but you're asking these questions now, even while we're still dealing with COVID, because you know how important it is, because you have not a business commitment to it, a deep-seated belief that this is the right path for our industry. You have this commitment that it's the right thing to do. Your organizations do. I know all of you do. And so other than COVID being a significant pause to uh, our ability to do those things, I am not worried that we've lost sight of that we need to tackle these issues and are going to in the future. I think we're going to have to wrestle COVID and make some lose some battles, but the war is far from over for us. Uh, and I'm encouraged by the fact that all of you hold this commitment to these initiatives uh, because they're the right thing. So uh, I'm encouraged. So thank you. I'm not sure. Jennifer. Yeah, I just wanted to um, say one thing about that now. It seems like a, a, the right moment to maybe mention it is, is you know, um, you're right. I think people haven't take their, taken their eye off the ball in terms of uh, other things that we have to deal with. And I, I just wanted to let, you know, members of this committee know that one of the things that the Academy is working on while we're talking about workforce, and this is a different segment of the workforce that we think has not been addressed in terms of equity and inclusion and that is the executive branch of our business and we are right now uh working furiously <laughs> to try and get something launched that we've had in uh planning for probably over a year and that's an executive mentorship program to see that um you know our industry is more inclusive at that level because we are you know, we passionately believe that change has to happen from the bottom up and from the top down. And that if, if, if the people that are sitting in positions of power um, are the people that have always been sitting in positions of power, that it doesn't really change anything and that we have a unique opportunity and a responsibility as to facilitate that change. So, um, you know, we we have uh, a small commitment uh, towards this program. Please, uh, more money and more commitment towards this initiative. Um, and you may, some of you may know too. You may have received an email about the Academy's Equity and Inclusion Fund. Um, and one of the main uh, things that we're talking about uh, doing is uh, providing anti-racism training for. Um, 
members in the academy at all different levels. So um, I'm just putting that out there so that you're all aware of it. And if, uh, you know, any of you have any ideas that you want to shoot my way uh, post this meeting, I'd love to talk to you about it. That is excellent information, Jennifer. Thank you so much. And uh, kudos for doing that and leading that work. OK, uh, any other comments on 6.2? If not, I'll say we should receive it and move on to the next item. Oh, sorry, Jindra, I apologize. Please go That's ahead. I just wanted to. Yeah. This is that bandwidth thing I was talking about earlier, guys. <laughs> is Ginger there? Did you make this happen today, Nisha? You're just driving home the point. Well, if Ginger was here, she'd be telling you how great I am. Let's just go with that theme. No, I'm just, um, <laughs> did we lose Ginger or is. I think we did. I apologize. Uh, when we get her back, to uh, no, no mention to you. Oh, there we go. Hi, can you hear me, Jonathan? We unfortunately lost you, but if you could restart, because I'm sure it was excellent, and I apologize for making you do it again. No, that's okay. I just wanted to thank Mag Lee's office in particular because she helped me, and we put together like we identified a need when we did a, a whole. All right, I, I promise that when Ginger is back and it works, we'll let her finish. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, anyone else with comments on 6.2, notwithstanding Ginger? Why? Ginger, I apologize, you cut out again and then I started speaking over the gap, so. Frozen again, I think you're frozen again, Ginger. I'm gonna keep trying to bring you on. Yes, I, I echo the commitment to let you get that out. Yes. Uh, so any other comments on 6.2? Just in the interest of time. Uh, and again, I, I'm trying to see everyone, so just bear with me. No, seeing none. Okay, uh, then I guess that, pardon me for the clerks, but it's a motion to receive this item. Unless we can get Ginger back on. Maybe Meg exactly. Lee, can you tell us, oh. uh, are you here that you can tell us what you did with Ginger? Because Ginger keeps freezing. <laughs> She's frozen again. Yes, uh, Ginger, I guess I'll, I'll do your update. But it was, um, it's uh, our office helped um, through Ginger and the Writers Guild to fund a program that Bell Media and the CMF are uh, heavily supporting. And the city came on board uh, to, uh, take five black indigenous or people of color uh, mid-career writers or so not emerging writers but mid-career writers for a rom-com writing boot camp with a showrunner from LA participating throughout and being um, sort of instrumental in the delivery of the program which is underway right now uh, and goes into February and then they pitch to broadcasters and Bell Media is um, committed to um, review in and, and essentially probably taking one of the scripts forward. Yeah. So it's a great writers. Uh, oh, gender you there. Oh yeah. No, we have like uh, Bell Media, Netflix came in, Lifetime Lifetime Network came in, Hallmark Nisha, bandwidth will be our first priority. I promise. Bandwidth will be a priority. Okay, I'll stop speaking. <laughs> you know, I think that's a really incredible story. And um, it, what would be great is if there could be, it could get picked up somewhere. I yeah. don't know who does PR and promotions for all that we do. It, I don't think anybody, but uh, some of you may have somebody attached to you that does that. Cynthia, you may have somebody through Film Ontario, some of the studios, but that's a pretty incredible story. Uh, worth telling uh, yeah. somehow media wise. So I'm just going to send that back to you, Marguerite, and, uh, Magali, to figure out how we can get some placement for that story. And any others for the industry will also help move things along. But it's very concrete, very exciting, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Happy ending. Can I send that back to you? 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, we work with Stratcom at the city, and um, I think what we would do is bundle together a few of these stories to to really reflect what we're working on as a whole and and pitch those. Um, so we can certainly work on that. Happy to tell that story. And I don't know if we have anybody anybody has any PR person that does that kind of work for story pitching outside of Stratcom, associated with any level or any studio or anybody or. I'm unclear. It would be helpful if we did. Alma does. Yes, you waving. You can help. You're out. You're muted. Sorry. I'm happy to check with Marguerite and Magali and see what Thank we you. Can there. No problem. I think that there's a lot Stratcom's doing, and this is kind of very particular niche, and we should drive it very hard. It's an interesting story, especially around the Christmas season. Happy story. Thank you. Okay. Jonathan, can you hear me yet? Yeah. Oh, there. Okay. I wanted to finish my story because it's it's really important. So besides Magley helping us, and she was fabulous, um, and the city coming in on our initiative. Um, so on a private note, we took a, uh, we're doing, how, we're looking at the numbers in regards to how many BIPOC people are working in writing rooms across Canada in the last six years. So I took that, it was my initiative from the diversity uh, committee from the Writers Guild. I mean, th this will get published eventually, but I was telling Magdalene, do you know it's less than 1%? Less than 1% over six years. That's sad. I'm sadly not surprised, but encouraged that we are aware of it and now we're ready to tackle it. That's amazing work. Yeah, those are things we're doing. Well, that's absolutely excellent. Thank you so much, Jinder, and thanks for raising it here today. Very important. I look forward to collaborating in any way you think that might be helpful, and I'm sure a lot of board members are. Thank you. And I'm glad we got you working again. Thank you. I don't know what the secret was, but excellent. I took the video. <laughs> uh, so, again, uh, any other comments at 622? I don't think so. I'm, I'm happy we were able to hear Jinder and that important comment. Uh, I believe it's a motion to accept or receive the item i can't remember i'll defer to clerks on this one that's correct all right now, is there a, a motion to do so by somebody cynthia thank you all those in favor those that's carried excellent thank you uh which brings us to 6.3 uh digital infrastructure project update sorry uh jonathan 6.3 and 6.4 oh right sorry yes yes the six this has become so 6.5 6.5 digital infrastructure yes thank you counselor uh, and so actually for that one, I believe we're going to Krista, correct? Krista, you are up. That is correct. Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you, Marguerite and Magali for asking me to provide this update. Um, so just backtracking uh, to give a bit of background when COVID hit, um, obviously uh, we had to pivot to a work from home scenario. And this is uh, talking specifically with um, animation, visual effects and post. Um, Marguerite and Magali under the City of Toronto Film Commission sprung into action to set up a meeting with the industry stakeholders to assess the situation and to establish needs for support for our, our sector. Uh, Nisha Ali, a partner EP at Spin Visual Effects and co-chair of CASO, Matt Bishop, principal, uh, sinking ship, co-chair CASO, Frank Falcone, CEO at Guru Animation Studios, and myself representing um, Company 3, formerly Deluxe, gathered and uh, started talking about the issues that were unique to our sector. It quickly became apparent that there were challenges regarding moving large amounts of data and digital media between residential homes of our employees and uh, our stakeholder offices. Uh, internet offerings in various parts of the city and rural areas, we soon, soon learned exactly where all of our staff lived, um, was inconsistent and restricted at times. For instance, there was some downtown condo infrastructures um, that only offered minimal up and down speeds for internet due to the um, lack of physical lines actually provided in that area of the city. And, and that type of scenario could be applied to, to different areas of Toronto and the GTA in, in general, depending on where um, employees resided. There was different um, issues and, and different speeds available. 
Um, the, the Toronto Film Commission set up meetings with the telecom providers uh, on this assessment, um, with Rogers and Bell specifically, um, providing direct contact to the stakeholders um, for us to engage in a larger scale discussion um, and to work with them directly as each you know, business had unique cases and unique workflows and infrastructure that they needed to discuss um, just on their own. Um, these increased technical needs added costs for both the companies and their employees during an already strained financial time. Additionally, vendors reached out to provide end-to-end -end solutions um, like Clearview from SohoNet or Streambox as a mode for animation, visual effects, and post facilities to review large-scale media in real time in a remote workflow, um, just enabling us to talk back and forth um, with, with our artists in, in a remote fashion. Um, so again, the city helped to bridge uh, the discussion with some of those relationships, which was very helpful. So fast forward to nine months later, um, we found ways to kind of deal with that new reality and the, the limited broadband um, that was uh, available to some of our uh, employees. And uh, we gathered again uh, to, to have another discussion and, and to continue um, just expressing, as Nisha did earlier, just the stresses that are put on our industry with the, um, the challenges with broadband in certain areas of the city. Um, at that time, you know, it was deemed that the needs uh, were quite unique for animation, quite unique for visual effects, and then unique again for post, since we tend to deal with the uh, largest format of digital media out of the three. Um, but with internet connectivity being the main issue between all, all three. Um, Sorry, excuse me, let me just decline that. <laughs> the, we, the, the latest discussion did focus on a need for business class internet lines uh, to be provided to residences. And that's um, a, a future discussion action item that, that our group needs to focus on and, and who in particular would need those business class internet, internet lines and how we could work with the telecom providers, not only to have the infrastructure set up, but also to you know, provide it in a, a relatively cost-effective manner um, since those, those costs do provide a lot of strain for our, our companies. Um, vendors like Soho Net Clearview continue to make proposals to serve a wider clientele in, in Toronto, and the city has been helpful in migrating through those evolving needs and connecting partners with the opportunity. So whether it's a bundled service and um, discounted pricing for four or five different vendors coming on board, again, the city's been really great um, helping to bridge those conversations and, and create a larger offering. Um, Animation and visual effects needs also center around co-location data centers uh, for rendering and digital storage. So now that we have a number of different uh, employees set up in different areas of the city, um, being able to access data centers or hubs um, is a need that animation and visual effects have uh, pointed out. Along with cloud rendering and cloud storage services, like Amazon Web Services. These cloud management tools will continue to be a necessity for animation, visual effects, and post to some degree to continue to work in a work from home or a hybrid work from home, work in facility environment as we you know, eventually get back, get back to uh, normalcy um, or, or whatever that will look like going forward. Uh, Nisha did report that CASO is commissioning a study um, with Ontario Crates and Nordicity focusing on the digital needs of animation and visual effects specifically and is working to include post in this survey. So I think that that will identify um, some other unique needs and, and niche pressure points that can be discussed and, and perhaps brought up to the city. Sector stakeholders and representatives will continue to meet independently, as well as with the city staff to follow up on action items. I'd like to thank Marguerite and Magali for continuing to uh, bring us together and to talk about common issues and to help to provide solutions um, that, that better help us with our business. So thank you during that time and going forward.
If I turn it back over to you, Jonathan. I think. If I could get, my, if I could, if I could get myself off mute, I would absolutely accept <laughs> it back. Thank you. Great. Uh, uh, very important stuff, Krista. Thank you for the hard lifting and for the work. And uh, I think actually, I don't know if there's any comments or questions on that. We kind of unpacked it earlier and you were very detailed. So thank you so much. Uh, and I know Nisha, you're going into your case of study, but if there's any comments you want to make anybody, now's the time. Absolutely. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, to that end, we are looking with the with the help of the City of Toronto, we are still looking for sponsors because uh, to in order to get the study uh, greenlit. Uh, we have uh, it is a big nut because it is uh, it spans across, uh, you know, three different areas. And um, in speaking with Nordicity, um, they have again, they have given us very uh, a very preferential pricing, but um, unfortunately, um, you know, we haven't been able to get uh, all the 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 total amount to green light it. Uh, we we have currently have the help of the city of Toronto, and Ontario creates um, is also uh, looking to um, help us with this. So, if any other association would like to join and help us out. Uh, we would really love that and appreciate it. It is a, an industry-wide initiative, and not only, uh, you know, in terms of the, the the broadband issue, as we have seen here. You don't have to be in visual effects or post in order to experience the issue. Yes, <laughs> Victoria, thank you. Hi. Uh, certainly, I think Nisha and Krista, we have uh, a stake in this as well because of the work from home in post-production that our members are doing in editorial and uh, also in the art department as well, it's maybe a lesser need, but um, we'd be happy to give me a shout anytime. We'd be happy to entertain uh, ways that we could support this initiative. Thank you, Victoria. Appreciate that. All right, perfect. Uh, anyone else for any comments on the digital infrastructure project updates? I just wanted to ask Nisha, it you're unable to start until you have the full funding. You've got the scope and everything planned, and now you're waiting for the funding. Is that the yes, we do have plan? the plan in place and the scope. Um, so we have a one pager that I can send to everyone, um, and we are waiting to be fully financed before um, we are able to say yes to Nordicity. Uh, would really What's love the, to. Uh, the overall cost of the study. It's it's a uh, sixty thousand um, dollars. Sorry, let me just fifty four fifty five thousand dollars. And what's your shortfall? Our shortfall is about twenty thousand. Okay, let's continue to discuss how to get that done because obviously from today, what's really clear is that working from home uh, is interesting won't be it will be part of the new normal in some way and yes. anything that we're looking at here really covers the uh, everybody's experience working from home in particular you need more far more power when you're doing the types yes. of jobs that you're doing but everybody is experiencing this issue so there are probably a whole number of things that could be added as well as new condos new developments what should be in those it's a requirement. You're raising this is the new frontier, and you're raising this. It's very important, and we should we should try to get at it really quickly. Is what I'm trying to say. So, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely, I, I would echo that. I've faced those challenges here with my business, uh, trying to get broadband to the studio, to the stages. As we branch out into other parts of the city, this will be a real challenge. All of us will face manifesting differently. So, I echo all the comments my colleagues have made. So very important. Uh, Anisha, I want to talk to you after about this as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments on this item? Okay, uh, so I believe we have a motion to receive uh, 6.5. I'm going to make that motion by Alistair. All in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, next, we go to item 6.6, 6, uh, Sustainability and Green Infrastructure Project. Uh, I believe, David Hardy, you you were leading the sort of charge on this, and you have an update on the Ontario Green Screen, so I can turn it over to David. 
Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks, everybody. Um, yes, very happy to announce that we are making, um, I think, pretty good progress with Ontario Green Screen. Um, we have a number of stakeholders that have contributed financially to set this program up to license the, with, with collaboration with Ontario Creates to license the platform that has been developed in British Columbia based on the Alfred program from, the, from BAFTA, the British Film Institute. Um, and to date, we've, uh, we've actually run a number of online training courses in climate and sustainable production training, uh, which is a, uh, an abridged version of a, what was a six hour in-person um, training session that, that rolled out with Real Green in British Columbia. The, co the uh, certainly the COVID lockdown has, has compelled us to reduce and streamline and offer online this training and it's been it's proven to be very successful so uh we've trained I, you know, we've several hundred at least already have uh, participated in the training there is also a carbon calculator element uh, which is designed more for the management of production that will allow them to uh, to better benchmark collect data on and report on their carbon impact um, so we are in the process right now uh, two two different uh, streams right now one is is kind of concurrently working on the skeleton and some of the issue of a strategic plan uh, and at the same time looking to hire a program manager to come in and work with staff from Ontario Creates and with the co-chairs, uh, Marsha, Marsha Douglas from CMPA and Justin Cutler from uh, Ontario Creates. Uh, we hope to have that person in place probably sooner rather than later, but it's proven to be, you know, quite a, quite a, a tome that has been created in terms of an RFP to uh, put out to the, to potential stakeholder or a person that would like to take on the program manager job. But we are anticipating certainly first quarter, uh, having that person on board, having our strat plan done uh, within within the first quarter of 2021 and, uh, and rolling it out. We're also finding concurrently is the degree to which certainly the foreign service productions, perhaps more so than domestic at this point, coming into into Toronto and having an expectation that they will have the same kind of infrastructure or frameworks uh, that they find in British Columbia. Um, we're, we're having to catch up. I think that there is certainly a lot of understanding that we have not been as, uh, as advanced as things are out there. Different clientele too. We, we, we cater to a different mixture of production in Ontario than and in the Toronto area than, than British Columbia. So, you know, we're, we're dealing with a lot more lower budget production for whom um, the perception at least exists that these, that many of the measures that are part of, um, of, of a better sustainable practice uh, cost, cost more money. And that's something that we're trying to get around. We're trying to move people beyond. Likewise, the perception that COVID has kind of halted everything and that you can't do anything that would be uh, a sustainable best practice because of COVID. Um, that's a fallacy. And, and again, we're trying to, we're trying to um, contend with that and be, be of course, be sympathetic and, and, and understanding of the fact that this, that COVID has kind of set people on their heels and, uh, and that uh, it's going to take some additional thought and, and effort to, Continue to be uh, to be sustainable, but sorry, backtracking to the to the to the committee. Um, we had our first kind of town hall open membership uh, um, video call the other day. It was probably last week, and it was we had over a hundred people on the call at one point. Uh, at this point, there are tiers of membership. There are the funders who have a vote and sit at the table. There are couple of different tiers of funders. Uh, so those that are, are not able to fund or to provide uh, as much as, as we would kind of benchmark 
are are able to participate in the meetings in the in the advisory meetings, but don't necessarily have a vote. And then there are those those uh, out in the general public who can access uh, any of the programs. They can access the general uh, the, the town hall meetings, um, and and you know contribute in other ways, but don't necessarily have a vote in the way in, in the direction that the organization is taking. Um, there are a number of, I think, a number of board uh, of advisory panel members that are on, on the Toronto Film Board, too. So if I've left out anything, please feel free to jump in and add. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I must say, I'm, I'm very pleased and excited to see so many uh, industry stakeholders uh, that are at the table. I think that's the only way this will work in Ontario is that we're all there working together to expand the offering, expand the expertise and the knowledge base that we have around sustainable best practices and um, and and gradually hopefully integrate training to our XOTO program, XOTO schools program and any of the other training uh, programs that the board and city are associated with so that as as potential film workers of the future are learning the skills and practices of of our trade our craft they're also learning how we are um, Pushing towards a scenario where we're doing our jobs differently, where we're bringing thought to how we can reduce our impact um, at the at the outset. So lots of exciting things happening. I think um, we'll be, I think, again ramping up and, and picking up speed when we have a program manager in the fold. And um, uh, I think that's about all I have to say. David, thank David. you very much. Uh, excellent report. Any comments, questions for Mr. Hardy? Just, I just have oh. a question. I was on for part of that. It was very impressive to have such a big push. Uh, this is going to be mirrored on the BC model. David, what would you say that, could you just tell us what the top three things are that are effective? In, uh, in what, what things are pivoting in BC tremendously right now around emissions, and it's all about getting what? diesel so gener. Oh, uh, emissions! You said okay. E yes, emissions from diesel generators are a big part of the conversation now. There's there's always the waste management from set. Um, I'm very happy to say that there is a new service provider on the scene in Ontario that will. Um, collect waste from set, and, and I'm not talking about just garbage, but we'll we'll collect separated waste, recyclable organics waste, and deal with them in the appropriate appropriate manner. Um, that's something that we have been lacking in Ontario, and it's uh, it's going to be a huge mountain to climb for one provider to deal with all of the production. So hopefully that will that will expand. But emissions waste on set. Um, and, and I think the other thing that we're really trying to focus on and that has been impacted by COVID right, right now is food donation and food waste and organics um, is being able to, um, and there's one more, I'll come to it, uh, being able to better manage how the waste on set is being dealt with, how food um, that is surplus is being, is being um, repurposed and, and donated. And again, because of COVID, that's, that's a bit of an impact on, on that that stream. The other is um, is set construction. Um, that's a that's a big, very visible issue, and how it is better dealt with than it has been. Um, where at the end of a production, um, you know, bulldozers go into sta stages and just total totally destroy and, and throw into garbage all of that material. That will be, I think, a, a, a main piece of of the puzzle going forward. On the practical, uh, you know, things that the industry can do to better, better kind of monitor, better manage how we deal with those issues. And then, of course, there's the training and um, communications piece that is going to be a huge piece as well. I just wanted to ask about power drops because that was something that I think our board has identified a number of times that we would like to have included. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for thank you for that. Those are all big ones, really clear. Um, and I don't know. Um, 
nobody needs nobody to make needs a to whole make. report in order to tackle some of these issues, I would think, right? Uh, and, and Magali will talk a little bit about the, the power drop, uh, but 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 just for anybody who for whom this doesn't doesn't ring familiar, um, both in Ontario, in Toronto, and in Vancouver for years, there has been conversation around how can we identify and create power hubs that are attached to the grid that are downtown in you know or not downtown necessarily, but in the popular filming destinations to allow for the removal of a diesel generator from from set both from a, a taking up space perspective and an emissions perspective um, and i think the, the the reality of it is that it's a very complex process typically involving many players um, there has been some headway in bc after again after a dozen years or so uh, where they've got a couple of them installed um, there are you know anytime you plant something physically and it's immovable uh, that uh, very quickly creates all sorts of issues like well okay your, your your location's across the street how do you run the cable do you have to go up and over do you have to you know there are all sorts of practical issues that are that that arise uh, and that's part of the the process of, of discussion with stakeholders with uh, with crews with the city with hydro with all the players um Clearly, to me, in my mind, the the solution is is new technology that that allows for the same flexibility and and um, uh, resource or adaptability of a mobile generator, but without the without the emissions. And and uh, there is a lot of work being done in that in that realm as we speak, both from a battery perspective and new technology. So hopefully, there will be something sooner rather than later. But um, Magali, do you want to jump in and, and talk a little bit about the, the City of Toronto Power Drop uh, exploration that you've been up to? Uh, sure. So I know that we talked about it at the last meeting, um, which is now many months ago, but just to update you, we are now at a point where we've put a solid internal plan on the assessment of the top locations. So we know uh, the grid power requirements uh, that would be sufficient. Sorry, the grid power. Uh, the grid power that would be sufficient uh, to respond to the needs of the film industry in five top filming locations. So basically to be a top five location, you both have to be popular for filming, which means like over 40 um, film shoots a year. And on the other side, uh, to have enough power that, it, that Toronto Hydro essentially already has in that either street corner or in a park parking lot uh, so that it, the cost doesn't become completely overwhelming and not worth it. So we're there. We had a great meeting. Uh, David Hardy was part of it last uh, week or earlier this week with all the divisions that would be involved in uh, the creation and ongoing operation of this, which means transportation, parks, uh, facilities, the environment office slash transform TO that is working towards the reduction of GHG uh, emissions for the city of Toronto and its 15 year plan and uh, something like this being contributing, of course, to uh, those goals. Uh, I would say the next step to that is, of course, funding and um, looking for the kind of funding that we would be looking for. We've mentioned this before. You, like if we call it a power drop, one unit is approximately around one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars to implement, and does not make its money immediately. It's a long-term sort of deal. I would say the greatest benefit it's not is not the financial recouping of it, but more the GHG emission reduction and the footprint of units being smaller on our streets and in our parks. So uh, that's where we're at. We're uh, going to meet again with Toronto Hydro to see who might be the owner of something like this. Would Hydro take on uh, infrastructure like this in the long term to run it and maintain it? Or would a contracting electrical uh, company or firm would do that? Should the city be able to um, in pay and install uh, install those? Excellent. Thank you, Maggie and David. Uh, any comments on those? I, I would just say that, th David, that's a great point. And Maggie, the power drops are a, a great example of an area where a green initiative also has an added benefit of tackling one of the major issues that, you know, Victoria and I work very closely on with her members, which is trying to get access to downtown core and spaces. And uh, one of the answers potentially could be this that allows them to 
reduce the size of the unit to get into spaces that otherwise might be problematic. It's the two-way street that is filmed. So uh, excellent work on that. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other areas like that where we can find added benefit from green initiatives that make it easier for us to uh, work alongside the residents of Toronto at the very least, but uh, you know, do a better job of what we do. So thank you. Just could you share the top five locations with everybody, Magalie? Yes, uh, so for parks is um, Casimir Gazowski Park in Etobicoke, James Garden just north from there, um, Ash Bridges Bay, um, which is in the ward, and uh, the two downtown locations on is Wellington uh, between Bay and York and Victoria Street between King and Richmond. So there's uh, some locations that might be more popular for filming, than those five, like say in the top 10, uh, but the power requirements would not be there already and make the cost near impossible to, to manage. So this makes the sort of top five for both criteria. All right, excellent. Uh, any other comments or questions? Uh, thank you for a great report. A motion to receive that item 6.6. .6. By Jeff, all those in favor, and that is carried. All right, thank you. Now, which brings us to item uh, FB 6.7, an overview of film and entertainment initiatives, uh, which we've had a great one already, but I'll take it back to uh, Marguerite or Maggie. I don't know who's gonna take the lead on this, uh, just to talk about. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, we can. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Got you. Sorry, there you are. I was okay. Trouble Wait, all right. <laughs> okay. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to make the film board aware of is that uh, the film office in the city of Toronto exists within um, a section called Film and Entertainment Industries that also includes music and tourism, and um, and we're actually growing this section. Uh, we're opening a, a new office, and it's um, interactive digital media. Uh, unit is going to be opening soon, which we're really, really thrilled about. Um, it's going to be a beautiful kind of companion piece of work to everything we're doing um, in the other units, in, in music and in tourism, in film, and even across uh, EDC through arts and culture services and so on. So when we say interactive digital media, There's of overlap with technologies that are now, you know, ascendant in uh, in film production. So we know that there's going to be some crossover benefit, and we're really excited about this. So we just wanted to let you know as the film board. Um, so that is update number one. Um, update number two from me uh, relates to real estate. As we all know, um, studio space uh, is uh, at a premium in Toronto, and availability of land is uh, our more can't just stay in the city of Toronto. So we've started a new real estate uh, newsletter that goes out um, on an as needed basis to let people know what's available that they could be looking at, should be looking at, because we're trying to stimulate that growth. Um, so those are two updates uh, from me and then over to Bobby for, uh, for updates from the uh, permitting and locations production side, Bobby. Thank you. Uh, can everyone hear me? Okay, perfect. Uh, so the film office has been a little bit busy uh, for the past five months since filming resumed. Uh, we've issued over 1,500 permits since the restart, and every month we're issuing a record amount of permits. And at one point we had over 30 productions filming at exactly the same time. We're servicing the industry completely online, working completely remotely, uh, which has its challenges, as you can in this meeting with uh, technology, but we're actually happy to report that um, it's been a success and service has not only been unaffected by the change, we're actually it's improved, uh, getting information out a lot faster than before. Uh, the two areas that we really concentrated on was safety and communication. We revised our protocols to align with Section 21 guidelines, specifically in the area of uh, canvassing residents and businesses. 
we developed a new letter that uh, goes out to communities explaining the filming, the bylaws, uh, has the link to section 21, and sometimes weeks in advance of filming. Now, I don't know about any of you, but for me, and this is kind of unfortunate, uh, getting the mail is the highlight of my day. And uh, based on the feedback that we're getting, most people enjoy this activity as well. Everyone's receiving our letters. Uh, we've spoken to many residents in the past uh, five months who have a lot of questions, and uh, rightfully so, given the confusing environment that we're all in. We use these situations to advise residents about Section 21, the safety that productions have undertaken, why film is allowed to operate, and how safe film sets are that are closed off to the general public. We've received actually a lot of positive communications from residents that are impressed with the way film productions operated in their area, which is also a huge testament on how productions have adapted to our new environment and the great work that is being conducted in neighborhoods. Uh, similarly, our work in the BIAs have changed as well. Uh, we've increased our lead time to communicate to the BIAs about the filming requests that come in. Uh, it gives us plenty of time uh, to coordinate filming and everyone's on board. The feedback that we've received from both the BIAs and productions have been extremely positive. And again, productions have done a remarkable job working with businesses and turning stakeholders into partners, and we're all helping each other out. Uh, it's been chaotic, uh, fast paced, heavy volume of work, but uh, working together with productions, residents and businesses, we've all come together and, uh, and made it work during this difficult time. Um, and that's the update from the Film Permitting Office. Uh, Bobby, thank you very much. Uh, excellent information. Uh, one on just the number of productions and the number of permits you've been doing. So kudos to that. Uh, but also that the residents have taken the time to actually give you the feedback that we are being good corporate citizens and, and residents ourselves and uh, hard work from this committee and from the producers and the crews to do that, especially during a very difficult time. So uh, again, I've never been prouder of our industry than I am now to hear that they're out there working safe and not somehow irritating people who are locked up at home and only get to see us. So that's that's a kudos to the hard work they've done because I know I'm on edge just with COVID. So uh, Bobby, thank you very much. Any comments for or questions for Bobby and that information? David. Yeah, Bobby, I just want to congratulate you on one, the, a recent letter that the city film office sent out about working with local uh, uh, local businesses and the fact that there were those questions about should they be open to the show. It's extremely helpful. And, and I, I sent it across our, the country and our various operations just to kind of get a sense of how we're communicating with the community at large about what we're doing and how we're doing it and how we're keeping um, keep, keeping people safe. And so I think it's really informative and uh, I congratulate you guys on that. Yeah, thank, thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something that's definitely popping up where uh, a lot of questions are coming in into our office. And then when we see that, we need to get, and like I was saying, the theme that we've been working on is communication. We need to get this information out to as many people as possible so to try and educate people on about film, why it's able to continue and, and the rules behind that. So that's something that we're going to continue to do and it's and it's going to be ongoing for sure. Excellent. Uh, Warren, I'm going to set your hand up. Yeah, Bobby um, and Marguerite Magley, I just want to congratulate you and thank you too on behalf of producers um, for the tremendous job you're doing on the communication. We, we literally couldn't do it without you. There are so many questions and Rightfully, people see things and they wonder if what they're seeing is uh, is contributing to the the spread of COVID. If there's something else uh, at play, and having uh, an office like the Toronto Film Office to clarify things and to ensure that uh, people are getting the right information is critical. And it, it's really, I think, playing a fundamental role in ensuring that the provincial government has continued to support us in uh, in our operations despite. Uh, you know, Toronto having to unfortunately enter the uh, the gray zone. So thank you very much for for all of that. Uh, I just Wonderful. want to have a, a comment here and simply say that uh, all the calls. That's great that you're doing this. The uh, during COVID, we would get a lot of calls. I, I see somebody sitting on a park bench. Somebody touched something. Send bylaw enforcement. Uh, people are highly stressed and believing and, and without a lot of information. So the fact that our film office is able to make very clear how the productions are running and 
are safe and that the industry has a stamp of approval to operate is very helpful. And that you're taking the calls, I really want to thank you for that, Bobby. The um, people are home, so they're reading things in their mailboxes in a way that they weren't before, and they are noticing everything that goes on in their community. So having a ramped up communications protocol is fantastic, and I want to thank the film office for that. The uh, having clear, concise communications is something that I know that this office has been working on. I have one kind of rags to riches story from Leslieville BIA, which had a number of owners and operators. One in particular was very concerned about film and agitated about the um, locations, etc. We've worked very closely with you, Victoria, my office, Susan, and you to work on better communications, letting that out early, letting the BIAs know what's going to happen, encouraging people to shop local, eat local, do things locally while in the neighborhood. And so I think part of this is from that experience that we had at, in Leslieville, and you and Susan were very critical in getting that done. And now the Leslieville BIA has a program they want to launch, and they'll be having Magalie and Bobby go to that meeting, and myself, I think, and Susan Saran, which is Leslieville Loves Film. So it's an actual complete turnaround, talk about how to host film shoots, how to be a good partner in the community, especially in locations that are very, very popular. So that's just a good news story, and I think it very much is part of the work that the film office has done to turn around what people were perceiving as negative negative impacts from film and turning that into you know, positive. So part of it is XO, XOTO film, and part of it is just good public relations. So I just wanted to comment on that. Thanks. And thank you, Victoria. Anyone else for any comments? Thank you, Paula. Uh, uh, Councillor, sorry. Uh, anyone else for comments? Okay, I think that's the last item of business, so we have to receive that report. Uh, is there a motion to receive that item? Jason Mosick? Uh, all those in favor? That is carried, and I will turn it back to you, Councillor. I think that was the last item of business uh, on the agenda, except for excusing anybody who's absent, if I'm not mistaken. Could I have a motion to excuse the absentees today, please? like to make that. Alistair, I saw you touch your glasses. I think that was you. Um, moving the motion to excuse the absentees. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Um, and that it concludes our business today. We said we'd be quick. We're pretty quick. Two hours. Um, we're all just going to say congratulations for getting through 2020. Oh, we're almost through 2020. And we're continuing on with the great work. Thanks to our staff in the film office for uh, being so resolute and Marguerite on tour and everybody working full steam to get the industry back in action, back in action safely. And I think each and every one of you is actually part of that great effort. So I do want to thank you on behalf of the city for being part of this board, for your great contributions and for keeping the industry strong, whether it be film, television or digital, whatever else for the next year. I wish you all very well for the season. I hope everybody gets a little bit of a break into 2020, 2021, and that we certainly remember uh, one another, one another's families, all those close to us, all those people who don't have families, doing our best to keep the season close and uh, some love to those we love. Thank you very much, everybody. See you in 2021. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Councillor. Thank, right thank you, Councillor.